friends welcome back to finding hope series we're happy that you have joined us in the study of the bible and today i would like to present to you questions that we are currently asking because of this pandemic that we are experiencing right now many people are asking and they are calling me sending me messages uh, sending private messages and the question is this is this the precursor to the end of the world is our world ending because of this pandemic? Are we really facing and on the brink of eternity 
Is this really the time where people are turning into zombie or probably the world is about to erupt and the world is about to end? Well, we ask that question right now because of the many crises we are facing. But do you know that in the Bible, the very same question was asked by the apostle. While the Lord Jesus Christ was sitting on the mountain, the apostle comes to him and asks this question in Matthew 24 verse 3. What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? They ask the same question to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And if you read Matthew chapter 24, you will immediately see the signs, the precursors that will have to happen before the, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and before the end of the world. The Lord mentions about wars and rumors of wars and we have been witnessing a lot of wars. Just in the past 100 years, we have First World War, Second World War and now many countries are still at war and many are dying because of wars. The Lord Jesus Christ mentions uh, about earthquake and recently we have been seeing a lot of earthquakes. In fact, a uh, few days ago there was an earthquake in the Philippines and in many parts of the world. And when you look at the graph on your screen, you will notice that the intensity and the frequency of earthquakes are actually shooting up. And Jesus Christ continues about the roaring of the waves, about tsunami, about pestilences, and about the crisis that will unfold right before our very eyes. I will not be going down to those signs one by one, but our concern today is this. As we are all witnessing these signs unfolding right our very eyes, we have two choices regarding our emotion and responses. We can easily lose heart and be occupied with fear, or we can be excited. So, people nowadays will have the option either to minimize or to maximize the events. For instance, they will say, ah, this is just the same thing, this will fizzle out, this will die down, and life will resume to normal. In fact, many people are posting on the social media about their future plans. What will they do uh, in case the enhanced community quarantine, the lockdowns, and the shutdowns will be lifted when people will be allowed to travel once again, what will be their destinations, and we see that in the social media nowadays. So some people really minimize. They say this will just fizzle down and everything will go back to normal again. On the other hand, some people tend to maximize things. They say this is really terrible. This is really uh, something that is huge and we are actually at the brink of the end of the world. People are turning into zombie. And sometimes this group of people can really exaggerate many things. This group of people can also be categorized into two. Either they can be negative about the events that are ongoing, like the suffering and the pain. Why is God allowing all this to happen? And some may be positive, thinking that finally the signs are being fulfilled and now we are nearing and we are closing in into witnessing the breaking of the skies whereby we will be able to see the coming of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. What will be our proper response as we see all these things unfolding right our very eyes? You know, Jesus Christ mentioned in Luke 21 verse 28 these words. He said, When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Here you will see something very important as we are witnessing all these changes, all these crises around us. Jesus Christ himself tells us what to do. He said, when all these things begin to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. To me, Jesus Christ was telling us to change our focus. Stand up, lift up your head, because your redemption is drawing near. So the way we should approach the crisis that is unfolding right before our eyes is to change our focus. And let me suggest, how are we going to change the focus so that we will not either exaggerate or minimize or just probably uh, will not care about the things that are happening around us? How to change the focus? Number one, from negativity to reality. 
You know, many popular psychologists and counselors will say today that instead of negativity, you should go for positivity. But there is one downside with just being positive. You see, we are actually wired to being uh, to look for something that are negative. And so when we just want to think and replace the negative with the positive, most of our life we see a lot of negative things. So instead of replacing negativity with positivity, we should rather replace negativity with reality, the truth, not only with thinking positive. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy suggests the process that we should go through in order for us to arrive into a healthy emotion. They said that in your slide you will see a funnel. This looks like this. First is the activating event and then it must go through the filter of your belief. Then the result of your mood of your feeling will be the consequences. Therefore, it is essential that we have the correct belief because the belief becomes our filter. The belief becomes the way we view things and how we respond is based on that belief. For instance, if there are negative events and we believe in the truth about the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, about its hope, then that truth, that belief will enable to have us a positive a genuine emotion, a hopeful emotion rather than panic. In, in other words, your belief, your faith determines your response into all this crisis and into all this pandemic. And what is the truth? The Bible says in John 17, 17, Sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. What is the truth about all these things that are happening around us? Titus 2, 13. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. The appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a blessed hope, something that he was looking forward to. Job understood that also while he was looking into uh, the future. He said in Job 19, I know that my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know that in my flesh I shall see God. Another one in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. Behold, Paul says, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all asleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed. John, looking forward into the vision shown to him by God in the book of Revelation, look ahead and he saw that in Revelation 21 verse 4 that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. So when we see and look into these negative events, pandemics, crisis after crisis, these negative events must be filtered by our belief system. And our belief system, the truth really, is telling us that something good is about to happen in the future. We have to look forward into the future with hope. Looking into the negative events and when you hold into irrational belief, when you panic, it will result to unhealthy emotion. And you know, this unhealthy emotion, according to Nedley, there, there is a high cost of being pessimist. There, there will be a greater risk of depression, impaired immune system, increased risk of premature death, increased risk of cardiovascular diseases, a reduction in overall physical and mental health. So instead of becoming pessimists, let's look at the truth. Let's filter all these events by the truth that we have something beautiful, something amazing, something wonderful that we can look forward to uh, in spite of all this pandemic. And so Jesus Christ said in Luke 21, 34, Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life and that they will close on you suddenly like a trap be careful unless your heart becomes weighed down with the anxieties of life you're overcome with the worries of the things that are going on around you and your heart is caught like a trap you know i like this poem written by richard hendrix he entitled lockdown at the beginning of this pandemic he wrote yes there is isolation Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. 
Yes, there is even death, but they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, now you can hear the birds sing again. Instead of negativity, let's focus on the truth. Let's focus on the reality. Something beautiful and wonderful is ahead of us. Let me also propose something from changing our focus. From being negative to looking into reality and from being fearful to being faithful. In Matthew 24, the Lord Jesus Christ asked in the context of the last day in Matthew 24, 45, Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his households to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. And to answer the question of the Lord Jesus Christ, he narrated a few parables in chapter 25 looking for the person in the context of the second coming. Prior to his second coming, what should be our attitude? And he said, our attitude should be faithful. Our attitude should be wise. So he narrated the story about uh, the ten virgins in Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13. He narrated about the, the servants which were entrusted talents. One were given two, one were given five talents, and the other one was given one talent. And at the end of the chapter, uh, he narrated about the sheep and the goats. These are all given to answer the question, who then is a faithful and wise servant? In other words, friends, in the last days, what really matters most is this. While waiting for the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, while we are witnessing all these pandemics and tragedies, do not panic. You should be faithful. You should be wise. You should mind your relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You should continue to serve. You should continue to expand the kingdom of God. You should have an extra oil like the, the virgins that are wise. You should have an extra reserve of oil that is the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. So in the last days, instead of panicking, let's have all this. Let's be faithful and let us be wise. Finally, instead of us panicking and being troubled with all these things going around us, changing focus, may I suggest from crisis focus to Christ is focus. Do you remember when Christ went back to heaven in Acts chapter 1 verses 10 to 11? While they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Friends, the focus of our waiting is the same Jesus. The person whom we should be excited meeting really is Jesus Christ. It is not the event. Let us not focus on crisis. Let us focus on Christ is. Christ is coming. Christ is in control. Christ is here. Christ is the solution. Christ is our peace. Christ is our joy. Christ is our strength. Christ is alive. Christ is our Savior. Christ is the King of Kings. Christ is the way. Christ is the truth. Christ is the life. Crisis is temporary. Christ is forever. Crisis is the question. Christ is the answer. My friends, in these last days, let's us have the Christ is mentality. Christ is coming and Christ is the focus because Christ is our Savior. No wonder Jesus Christ said in Luke 21, 28, when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing nearer. You may have heard about the story of this young woman, young lady who was diagnosed with a terminal illness. She was given a few months to live, so as she was getting her things done, she contacted her pastor and had him come to her to discuss certain aspects of her final wishes. She told uh, the pastor which songs she wanted sung at the service, what scriptures she, uh, she would like to be read, and what outfit she wanted to be buried in. The woman also requested to be buried with her favorite Bible. Everything was in order and the pastor was preparing to leave. When the woman suddenly remembered something very important to her, there's one more thing she told the pastor excitedly. What's that? The pastor replied, 
This is very important, the woman continued. I want to be buried with a fork in my hand. The pastor stood looking at the woman, not knowing quite what to say. That surprises you, doesn't it? The woman asked. Well, to be honest, the pastor replied, I am puzzled. The woman explained, In all my years of attending church and social potluck dinners, I always remember that when the dishes of the main course were being cleared, someone would whisper and lean over and say, Keep your fork. It was my favorite part because I know that something better was coming. Probably a velvet chocolate, a cake, or deep dish apple pie. Something wonderful and with substance. So I just want people to see me there in the casket with a fork in my hand and I wanted them to wonder. And when they ask, what's with the fork? Then I want you to tell them, keep your fork. The best is yet to come. Friends, as we are facing crisis after crisis, the best is yet to come. Jesus is coming. Your Savior is coming. Our Redeemer is coming. There will be eternal life. There will be eternal joy. And there will be an eternal time we will spend with one another. And most of all, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The best is about to come. with us on our Finding Hope live stream series. We hope that you would join us again on our next series. But now, we are inviting you to join us on the Zoom breakout session. If you have filled out our pre-registration form, you would be receiving an email or WhatsApp message for your breakout session group. But if you have not filled out our pre-registration form, don't worry. We have prepared a Zoom link for you to join the breakout session. You may find the Zoom link on the pinned comment below. See you there!